Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the next version of Let's Get Solving with Google Cloud. My name is Nitin Khatter. I'm working as a customer engineer with Google Cloud Platform. Uh, I'm a data analytics specialist and I work with customers in helping and sorting out the data strategy on Google Cloud Platform. So in today's session, uh, we'll work uh, study on what is data warehousing, uh, how we can solve data warehousing with BigQuery. Uh, we'll learn about what are the different uh, trends that we are seeing uh, across the industry that business organizations are looking at beyond uh, a traditional data warehousing. And we'll also look at uh, you know uh, one of our problem statement that we saw in the last version and uh, how this big query stands in the entire uh, workflow. We'll also learn about what are the, some of the unique differentiators of BigQuery and I will have a demo at the end. So to begin with, uh, as I said, for, we need to understand that how businesses uh, are changing uh, nowadays and they're looking at a more actionable insights from the data warehouse. They have moved on uh, from a traditional warehousing or a traditional reporting background. And what they're right now looking at is what is the 360 degree view of the businesses by breaking down the silos, bringing data from multiple disparate sources and bringing into a data warehouse where you can look across uh, the insights, you can look uh, some of the patterns across different uh, sources of data rather than having data lying in different areas. Second, uh, to be more situationally aware and responsive, they are looking at real-time business events. Because if you look at uh, some of these events which are generated at the upstream sources, they all are real-time in nature. So can we also generate insights out of those data in real-time? So that is uh, what the, the businesses would be looking at. Third, uh, is to make uh, help business users of the organization uh, have a data-driven decision making. And how this is possible is only when you have a self-service access uh, to your data and insights. Moreover, the fifth part to it, the fourth part to it would be, how do you uh, get those insights uh, and reduce the time to uh, basically generate those insights? And these, these insights could not just be a report, it could be predictive in nature how you're able to judge or identify that, you know, forecast some of the user patterns, identify, for example, what would be the demand, whether the user is going to make a purchase or not. All these predictive insights, how we can reduce the time, how we can get this uh, faster uh, within my data warehouse without I have to move a lot of data here and there. And lastly, very important, uh, with the amount of data and scale that we are generating, how we can ensure there is a proper security and governance. So all these things are what businesses are looking at. Now, before moving on to the solution, let's look at what was the problem statement uh, we saw in the last session. Uh, so what we were talking about is a Twitter sentiment analysis, very common in our day-to-day -day lives. We have Twitter, and this is a workflow that describes that how do you, uh, in a streaming fashion, in real-time fashion, uh, look at the Twitter feeds, identify uh, the sentiment out of that feed, put that sentiment into a big query uh, for your analytics and build a dashboard on the top of it or do some uh, predictive analytics at the same time, exploratory analysis. And what we looked at last time was the core, which is data flow. The, we looked at one of the demo where uh, we published the events which were coming, coming from PubSub, uh, you know, processed it through data flow using the data flow templates and insert it into big query. Now, today, since uh, then this is the next part, we'll be looking at how does BigQuery stand separately? What are the different unique differentiators? What are the, uh, you know, how does it meet the requirements that we just saw in the last slide? Uh, what different businesses nowadays are looking at? So with, without much ado, let's move on to understand BigQuery. So these are some of the six unique differentiators that you would see on BigQuery side of it. One, it is uh, serverless in nature. So it is uh, meant for enterprise data warehouse with a petabyte to exabyte scale. Uh, the storage and the compute are completely decoupled. So you will not face any sort of issues when you are scaling up your storage and you have issues on the other side where you know the query, uh, you may not be consuming the data or calculating the insights uh, too frequently, but your data is growing at a faster speed Then you have to keep on adding more and more machines. That's not the case with uh, BigQuery. And uh, since it's completely serverless, you don't have to uh, have any uh, control, any nodes. So there is nothing of that sort that you have to, uh, you know, uh, put some nodes, you have to increase them, you have to maintain it. Uh, every time the data is growing, you need to keep adding those nodes. So 
uh, that's not uh, what the architecture of bigquery is on the contrary if you look at uh, from the unique standpoint uh, more than just serverless it gives you that maximum agility and skill it do the auto it do a lot of automatic reclustering at the back end uh, there are a lot of optimizations uh, based on the architecture that we have uh, since you know the storage and the compute are decoupled there is a, a shuffle layer in between where and the entire uh, you know the join and everything happens more than that uh, the real time insights is one of the data warehouses that allows you to insert data at the real time so when we talked about uh, the requirement where uh, organization are moving towards real time business events uh, they are looking how they can react on the events which are being generated so that will demand that when the data is flowing from those real time sources i should be able to insert the same data into my warehouse and join it with my dimensional data or any other data and calculate the insights and use that insights to do any sort of a real time use cases let's say a real time personalization let's say anomaly detection any sort of fraud prevention all these would would require my streaming events to be inserted into my data warehouse in real time and bigquery supports that moving on uh, the third part uh, you know as pointed out is the built in ml so when we said that uh, we need to have the predictive insights very fast we need to reduce the time to generate those predictive insights so therefore we would require some sort of a machine learning capabilities within my data warehouse so that i don't have to move out my data i don't have to uh, build another pipeline and do all those uh, management overheads of uh, building a data science environment separately i should be able to conduct a lot of my use cases be it prediction be it forecasting be it segmentation uh, be it uh, even recommendation i should be able to do that within where my data sits so that's what the capability of ml uh, is being added and it's completely uh, native sql kind of a sql and sql compliant uh, so just with the help of a sql statement uh, you can uh, create a regression model or a classification model and many such uh, such algorithm models lastly a very high speed for you know in memory bi engine uh, that supports bigquery it's a kind of a memory layer on the top where it reduces the uh, latencies of your dashboards uh, from seconds to sub seconds so when you're looking at a very fast interactive dashboarding we need a very high speed memory layer which acts as a olap cube on the top of it caches your uh, queries and the pattern based on the patterns but you don't have to maintain uh, and look at what how is the eviction and other things happen so you just have to choose what is the size of my memory and that's it everything the work is going to be done by bi engine so these are some of the capabilities and then there are more that i have not listed out here where for example uh, bigquery has gis support which is geographical information system support so uh, you can uh, insert your geo data into bigquery in the geo data types and do a lot of uh, transformations and analytics on the top of it you can even visualize that data uh, using some of the ui which is integrated with bigquery so that is also another uh, you know area and differentiator that we call out for so uh, with all this i think bigquery becomes one of the enterprise data warehouse and it is also uh, very uh, you know cheap in terms of or very cost effective in comparison to the other data warehouses uh, with the other cloud providers or on prem and there have been many reports uh, that you can see uh, which have been published by third party that compares bigquery across uh, its likes uh, on the competition side now moving on uh what are the six tenets of bigquery as a modern data warehouse uh, as i said you know when you look at a traditional data warehouse you would be looking at uh, whether it is able to do a complex etl i am able to do some stored procedures i am able to do some analytical functions some some of the functions uh, which would be time series and all those things uh, am i able to do that so with traditional data warehouses we have those restrictions uh then it is restricted to only a few users because you don't have the power of scale you have to keep adding more and more data and uh, therefore uh, you can have a limited set of users and then it is optimized for the legacy uh, bi reporting as i said you know the uh, when you look at uh, the requirements of sub second latencies are your traditional data warehouses able to serve you that with that purpose or not and then optimization for batch data continuous patching is required and updates and then it requires a army of dps to basically handle that because it's it's, com it's completely not serverless it's it's uh, based on sort of nodes you have to keep adding those nodes someone has to uh, do the management overhead uh, that is required to maintain the data warehouse 
But BigQuery resolves all of that uh, with the differentiators we just looked at in the last slide. It helps you automate your data delivery to the data warehouse. There are a lot of ETL around BigQuery, within BigQuery that is supported. Uh, any sort of analytical time series uh, functions, all are available in BigQuery. You can create your own user-defined functions as well. And then uh, making the insights available to all the set of users so you can scale data to as much scale and you can have as many users as you want. There is no uh, separate uh, you know, uh, restriction that if a particular user is going to put that load, it is going, you'll not be able to, uh, you know, uh, if it affects the storage of or the complete operations of the data warehouse, that's not the case. So you can scale it to as many users with a self-service access. Uh, then, as I said, uh, it is optimized for BI, for ML, AI, and all those side of things. So you don't have to uh, look anywhere outside of the data warehouse if you want to do some of their uh, ML uh, use cases. And then real time, there are other uh, factors that we talked about, uh, data protection, security governance, and simplifying of the operation. All of these uh, resolve all those six tenets that would be looking in a particular data warehouse. Now, we have talked a lot about how the BigQuery, uh, what are different uh, unique differentiators, how does it fit in our problem statement when we're looking at uh, Twitter sentiment analysis. Uh, uh, once the data reaches BigQuery, we can simply do the analysis on the top of it. Let's look at that in action. Uh, you know, uh, move on to Quick Labs, and that will help. We'll do a sort of small demo out there. So uh, just go through this link. I encourage you, everyone, to scan this QR code. Uh, this will actually take you to the data flow. Uh, you know, uh, Quick Lab, which we did in the last session. Uh, that you have to complete first, and then only you are going to get a 30-day subscription. And after that, then you are free to do a lot of uh, uh, labs and that will help you actually ramp up very faster. It's a very great platform. That's where I encourage you everyone to just scan this uh, QR code. So let's move on. Let's look at uh, one such uh, uh, you know, quick lab session. So this is what I was mentioning to. Let me just uh, zoom a little, yeah. So uh, you can go and first of all, complete the data flow, uh, one lab. And then after that, there are a lot many labs on BigQuery, just search BigQuery. This is one of the labs that I have picked up where you can explore how you explore the e-commerce data set. So consider the data has already landed uh, within BigQuery. Now, how do we do the analysis on the top of it? So uh, let's start the lab. And then we'll look at, you know, uh, what are the small things that would be required? Okay, so this let me just copy this, or uh, let's open let's open this into an incognito window. So here's it, and let me copy the credentials. Okay, so let's move ahead. So this is loading uh, the dashboard for now, uh, the console actually. And once that gets loaded, then we'll move to the BigQuery side of it and we'll follow the rest of the steps. So just agree and continue. Okay, so let's look at uh, what are the next steps to it. If you just browse through it, so it's a very good platform that helps you, okay, what are we going to do today? It will talk about, okay, we'll look at our e-commerce data set and we'll try and do some analysis on the top of it. And we'll give you a step-by-step. -step. And this is what you're going to learn from this particular lab. How do you access a particular data set? How do you look at the metadata of the data set? Uh, what are the details? What are the schema? How do you uh, could remove a duplicate entry, small transformation that you would like to do and write and execute the query? So this will help you do a, a you know ramping on the big query quick, uh, quickly and faster. So let's go to that one by one. So first it's going to, I think we've done the login, this is done. And uh, so the next part to it is navigate to BigQuery. Okay, so let's uh, do that. Okay, uh, you can search for BigQuery out here. You can search for the BigQuery. Uh, yeah, so this is going to load the BigQuery console. Okay, as you can see that on the left-hand side, uh, you will see a lot of things that you can look at the query history and other things. 
here is the here is the project and I, I we can create a data set right now there is no data set or we can you know, explore the public data sets as we'll be doing in this lab so let's look at the next step uh, so we are already in the bigquery so it is asking you the public displays are not displayed so to open the public data set just open this link in the new browser window so let's open this thing actually copy this link and move to our incognito window It's actually asking us to sign in. Let's copy again. Yeah, so now this is working. Uh, it's actually the, the project name is uh, uh, Data to Insights. And now if you look at Okay, yeah. If you see there, you have your new data set coming in. Uh, this is the new project, which is called Data to Insights. And if I scroll down, so there are a lot many data sets within this, and we'll be looking at the data set, which is e-commerce. Yeah, this is the data set that we'll be looking at. And it has multiple tables, like all the sessions, uh, there is categories, just just like a, a sample e-commerce data set would have. Okay, so moving on, let's look at the next of the steps. So we have uh, the data to insights. We have can pin the project if we want. Let's do that. The data to insights, we can pin the project. Okay, it's done. Uh, what are the next things? So we can close that particular browser window and refresh the BigQuery browser. Okay, so it should be listed. It's fine, we can continue here as well. And then uh, uh, the next scenario that we're going to look at is a data analyst team uh, exported the Google Analytics log. That's what we talked about, the sessions table. And they have created a new table in the raw e-commerce visit data. Okay, so uh, let's look at this all sessions table uh, and see what are the schema, what are the details and preview, what are the details of it? Let's look at, uh, so we can go here, we can go to the all sessions uh, raw table, okay? And let's look at, so this is what we were talking about that there's one tab which is called schema. So you have your visitor ID, you have your other uh, attributes like what was the country, city, the customer came from, uh, what are the transaction he's made, what are the revenue, uh, what are the page view. So all of this data is there, the sessions data. And uh, if you look at the next tab, it talks about detail. So this is a raw table which is having almost 5 GB of data and there's no expiration. When was the data created? How many rows actually it has? 21 million rows. Uh, what is the location of the data? And if you will enable partitioning and other things, you will also see that these those uh, attributes will start coming in. Uh, that uh, is there a partition, then it is partitioned by what column or what scheme. If it is clustered, then it is clustered by what scheme. So that would also start coming up. And then you can also have a preview of this data. So we need not to run any query and you can look at uh, what are the uh, different small sample values. So it basically loads 100 records for you in the preview. And then you can browse a lot of these values and look at, okay, see, uh, as, as we said, so it's a complete e-commerce data and it is coming what transaction one made, uh, what was the date and the visit ID at that particular time. Uh, was there any transaction done or is just the, you know, the person is viewing and what are the page views based on that. So all the dead data, you can basically do a preview. And similarly, uh, you can look at other things. So uh, just obviously UI tab will show the data types. So it's the schema, I think we're right. And how many rows it has, uh, over 20 million rows we looked at. That's also correct. So now let's do one small task and then uh, uh, was what like identifying the duplicate rows. So we can go into the preview tab. So we'll ask you to query and look at, you know, how do you calculate our duplicates? So let's uh, copy this query and try and understand that in BigQuery console. So uh, we can simply compose a new query. It's already blank. Let's paste this, okay? So if you look at what are we doing out here? So normally when we do a duplicates, we will do a group by clauses. So a standard SQL we are writing, we are, uh, you know, reading from this particular project, this data set, and this all sessions raw table, we are grouping by all the different columns it is having. Uh, and then we are having uh, the adding a having clause that the number of duplicate rays uh, should be greater than one. So we are doing a 
group by calculating the number of rows, uh, the count of the rows, and then we are doing a having that it should be more than one. So we're just trying to remove the duplicate. Just run this query and let's see uh, how much time it takes. So you will see here that the query is running. It's uh, what are the different stages. We can uh, go later and deep into that. How, what are the different uh, stages it is going through? Uh, what the different uh, you know steps that it includes while it is doing the group by? So it actually queried the entire 5.6 GB of data because we are doing it for the entire data set. It took 16 seconds to uh, basically to, uh, identify that. And now you have the uh, deduplicated, sorry, du uh, deduplicated data. So you would see that, okay, for every visitor ID uh, and the, all the columns uh, grouping, we have two duplicate rows and then there's for some other 14 duplicate rows. So you are actually finding all the sort of duplicates out here that for every sim uh, combination, how many uh, duplicate rows I have. And uh, this is one way. And if you look at how many uh, rows we have, there's a 615 number of rows here it is visible. So we can just choose 615 and should be right. Yes. So what we normally do in a normal uh, RDBMS is what we have to do out here. So it's a simple uh, task. Uh, it's simple to do that uh, within the data set, uh, within BigQuery itself. So that's kind of uh, easy. So even if you have a unique key, you can use that uh, for doing any sort of a group by. So we have completed this one. I think it's taking certain time to refresh. That's okay. So this one is done. Uh, what are the next things? So you can analyze the all sessions table. So you can just feel free to go through the rest of the uh, lab. And in the interest of time, I'll not go further. Uh, but you can basically, that's how easy it is to do the analysis on the BigQuery. So you can simply start writing your own SQL queries. Uh, just try to compose new query. You can look at the query history. Uh, you can do all sort of different functions. So just go through the BigQuery documentation. If you're looking for a specific function or you want to create your own function, uh, you can basically do that. And then uh, go through other labs on the BigQuery that talks about partitioning, how do you do clustering, what are the best practices, and how do you perf optimize the performance of BigQuery. All this, uh, the numerous labs available and go through the documentation uh, that helps you uh, navigate for specific uh, questions or you know any sort of queries that you have. So uh, that's all I had for today. Uh, thanks everyone uh, for your precious time. Uh, let's go back and as I said, you know, uh, just scan through this particular uh, QR code that's going to help you give a 30 days access uh, to Quick Labs. And you already seen how to run a lab. Uh, just go and claim this offer of 30 days. And then uh, I think this will be really super helpful. Thanks a lot. Uh, hope to see you in the next version. Uh, till that, uh, thank you so much. Uh, stick.